You have an incredible perspective on the Dion thing because he worked with you. So now he's at CU. We all know the story nationally. Uh, I'm with you. Like I kind of feel like the Oregon USC thing are going to be wake up calls, but it's not. It's if they get their asses kicked because I just don't know if they can stop enough people passing the football. Like I think TCU is an example of that. I thought Colorado State ate them up with certain like that crossing stuff. They just never really stopped and it just kept happening never. over and over again. So, but I don't think this should be a like. Oh, there you go. Told you so. Like that. Like. I don't know. That'll happen in some corners because I think whatever this is, it's already a success. Like after whatever the record is, I feel like this first year is a massive success based on like this is going to be beyond what any CU fan thought it would be. And, you know, look, I don't think they're winning nine games. Maybe that's the best version of it. But I would hope people don't point to it if they lose and go like, oh, this whole thing was a fluke. Because I right. think most of us that are actually like paying attention to this understand like that day's coming pretty soon in a matchup with a team that's like a top 10 team. Right, right. It, it is coming. And I do think there will be that reaction, um, which you just have to uh, right. deal with. But Dion, it's crazy what he's been able to do. I, Dion, uh, let me ask you this. It, does Dion have maybe one of the most fascinating careers of anyone in sports? Because it really doesn't get talked about enough how insane it is that he was this hall of fame cornerback played baseball played in the world series then did like whatever it was 10 15 years of of media and now he's a major power five coach that is having success there's no one that has that type of resume and the juice that he brings to colorado and just the excitement it's crazy. I think he's like a one of one type of guy. I really don't think that there's that that he's kind of screwing it back to like the Badgers. He's kind of screwing it for everyone else who thinks that the turnaround can happen so quickly uh, because I don't think anyone can replicate what Dion is doing. And let's just say, too, because people will be like, how is he doing? The guys he's got are really fucking good. Shador Sanders could have played at a power five, any power five school he wanted. Travis Hunter was the number one recruit coming out of high school that you know the florida state thing he was he was at florida state was convinced they were going to get him so it's not like he's doing it with nobodies he's doing it with very very talented players but i it's really shocking to see how quickly it happened and I, it's just so much fun to watch like dion is college football right now well, he is the story of the of the of september it's funny with him because like there'll be a wave of support and then it'll be really old school and some of the people that wouldn't support anything old school have been left in this kind of quandary like, wait, I, I think I'm all in on this guy, but I don't like that comment. I don't like that perspective. I don't like what he's saying there. And now it's success in the field. So like, I don't know what his approval rating ever is. He's not going to be for everybody. Right. I also suggest that I've seen other head coaches that are hired by really passionate programs that people shit on immediately. When Gene Chizik got off the plane at Auburn and there was like <laughs> one guy behind a fence screaming, we need a leader, not a loser. Um, <laughs> That's Auburn. Auburn remember, is maybe no, the most toxic <laughs> fan base <laughs> by far. There no pushback here. Stanford so, Steve and I will like do an Auburn five minutes on the phone every now and then where I go, whatever you think crazy is, then there's yeah. Auburn. Uh, yeah. And yet they still are like really good once every five years. They're kind of like the Kirk Ferentz programs where yeah. you realize why you're still passionate about it because, and I'm not even like necessarily talking about Iowa because I think, you know, American needs farmers were very pro Iowa other than that one year where Danny and, and I went at it way too much. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's one of the lessons of watching. I could not get past that Iowa Wisconsin game the year people were arguing for Iowa to play for a national championship and I thought Wisconsin just gave it away. And I'm like, Iowa stinks. Do not fall for this. And they ended up, yeah. I thought they were going to be. But Dion, like, is somebody that's not malleable can become unpopular. But I think him being unmalleable is like one of his greatest strengths. And I even watching him with his kids when they were watching an NFL game. And I think Shiloh's going like, yeah, we could play these guys next year. And Dion's like, what are you guys talking about? You're not leaving. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and if that were any other coach, can you imagine like a basketball coach sitting next to his lottery pick, going, "You're and look, Shador's the guy that'd be going high," but he's like, "No, you're staying. You have to stay on campus next year." Like people be irate, so he's not for everybody. But I don't know that he's ever changed. He, and he also his story in recruiting is way more compelling than anyone else's. Like he can sit in any living room in America and be like, "Hey, you know how you want your son." 
to make it to the pros and get paid and be his worth. Well, guess what I did? I did all of that. I made a, a position that never got talked about, a talked about position, and all the stuff that he did at Florida State and then getting drafted like he is – he was NIL before NIL. He was the, 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 the player, uh, you know, gets to decide the player rights before any of that stuff. So he can sit down and be like, I am the guy. I am the guy who knows that the goal here is to get to the NFL. But yeah, you're right. His sons, he can basically, he can basically do whatever he wants. I did like, I think it might not have been Shiloh. It might have been, uh, Deion Sanders Jr. who called, uh, Danny Cannell a hoe for real. Um, so that was, that was real. good. Yeah. That was. <laughs> Danny, Danny, Danny had to know that was coming when he's criticizing Dion. And then the Im- immediate first reply is, Hey, Danny Cannell's last play as a starter was Dion Sanders pick six. Like you gotta, you gotta be tightened up there. You gotta know that that reply is going to be coming for you. So look, I'm not going to sit here and endorse every Danny Cannell tweet, but I like I Danny, but it was this... that one. He just stepped on the, he stepped on the rake there. There's two Danny's. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> there are there are two Dannys, and the the Twitter guy takes an absolute beating. Um, and by the way, that that wasn't that wasn't accurate. The that was his last start ever because he started. I knew as soon as it came up, like it got turned into today was the day. Maybe it was. And it's a twenty five year anniversary, and that's why he's doing all these things. I think Danny, as a knoll, was upset that Dion was yeah. basically like ever since then he's kind of like fuck Tallahassee. Like, yeah, I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. Um, you know, there was something this year earlier where he was like, Florida State didn't do anything for me. I was prime before I showed up and all this different stuff. And Danny was like very simple. I didn't even think this tweet was that bad. He was like, why would you say that? Like what? And then yeah. it, it started down this road where his kids are calling Danny Canella ho for real. <laughs> it's so. a great comeback, though. You don't. What do you say to that? You're a ho for real? Like, no, I'm not. As, and then it's like, like, okay, so you're just a regular right. hoe? <laughs> like, you can there's not many comebacks. No, no. 